All right, so one of the first things that you need to do when you're gonna do a job, especially if it's gonna be a big job where you're gonna be replacing a bunch of components and stuff, is to get all the parts laid out, bench, table, or something, so you can see I have a table set up here, and I've laid out all the new parts that I've gotten. Um, I want to make sure that I have all the parts that I need. I want to check the parts to make sure that they sent me the correct parts, make sure they didn't get damaged or anything, and get that all organized. The other thing I want to make sure I do is get any information that I'm going to need to do this job. Go on all data, get capacities, torque specs, whatever I'm going to need to do this job. And then I want to make sure that I get the tools out that I'm going to need. Put them on the table there or the bench by where I'm working or if you got a toolbox you can roll it over like I have a big toolbox it's right here next to the uh, vehicle that we're working on so if there's anything else I need I can just go into one of these drawers grab what I want pull it up so you can see I got everything all organized nice and neat in there so that I can find it so those are some good things to do because you don't want to waste a lot of time looking for stuff, trying to find your parts. You want to get them all, like I said, laid out on the table here so that we're ready to go. All right, so let's go over here by the vehicle and take a look at what we're actually going to be doing to this vehicle here. So as I said, we're going to put a complete air conditioning system on it. Now I've already done a few things to the system, so... I'm not going to take them apart and do it again, but this was some stuff that I had done earlier. Um, we actually redid this whole uh, truck about two, three years ago. We finished it up in the collision repair class, put a bunch of new parts on it, got it all repainted. So now it's in my shop, and I'm uh, working on getting the engine back together. You can see there's still stuff that I have to do to the engine, get brakes master brake cylinder, a lot of other stuff to go in, but none of that stuff uh, has anything to do with air conditioning, so we're not going to worry too much about it, but uh, we're going to take and do this system, show you what's going on in it. Like I said, it's all the same parts that you're going to have with a uh, newer vehicle. It's just set up a little bit different. So if we take and move this wire out of the way here, those two pipes that are coming through the wall there, through the firewall, that is your heater core. And on this particular vehicle, the heater core is on the inside in the uh, passenger compartment. So there's be a fiberglass heater box around it, and you'll need to uh, take that down to access the um, heater core. On the front, on the firewall, is this other part of the heater box again another fiberglass box there and it's going to contain uh, where this big opening is here right in there there we go that is where your blower motor is going to go and then the wiring harness is hanging down for it and then in the box here this is where the evaporator is and that's the first component that we're going to replace so the evaporator this is the evaporator coming out of it the refrigerant inside the evaporator is going to get sucked out from this hose, going to go through the rest of the system, which we'll explain, and then it will come back in through this return line down here into the bottom of the evaporator. Now you'll notice there's plastic plugs on it. That's the way all new air conditioning parts will come. They'll have plastic plugs on it that try to keep any dirt and debris out of it but also we're trying to keep air and moisture out of it no matter what you do you're going to get some air and moisture in it but you want to keep these plugs on until you're absolutely ready to change the part or open up the system you don't want to open it up and leave it open and let more moisture and air get in there so one of the things that we have to do um, when we have a system that's been opened up and we got moisture and, and air in there is we're going to have to put it on vacuum. Hopefully you've all watched that video or those three videos I should say from Robin Air about using our machine. So if all we're going to do is evacuate the refrigerant and put new refrigerant in and we don't open up the system, we don't have to put it under a vacuum. But if we open up the system and let air and moisture in, then we're going to have to put it under a vacuum. And what that vacuum will do, it'll bring the uh, 
boiling temperature of the water down so that we can boil the water and the moisture in there off and get all that air out of it. Okay, it'll bleed the air out and then it will um, allow us to boil off the moisture that's in there. And then we'll be able to put um, refrigerant in it. So you'll notice over here, this is our um, evaporator right in here. You can see it's just pretty much just like a, uh, um, a radiator or a heater core. It's got the little thin tubes in that in there. Um, this hole right here, this is where this part here goes. Let me show you this part here. And this is a blower motor resistor. So they have that sitting right out on, right out here on the, uh, the heater box. And then all our wires and everything that are going to go to the various components are off, all off here to the side. Now, this being a 78, our evaporator is out here in the engine compartment. On your newer vehicles, this is going to be underneath the dash. Okay, there'll be hose pipes coming through the wall to disc firewall to disconnect, but it'll be on the inside. This one is out here in the engine compartment, so we're going to be able to replace it from out here. And if you'll notice, you can see there's a seam down the center. The one side, it's a little different in color as well, too. So where that seam is, there's a couple of bolts that hold it together, and we take that half of the heater box off, and that's how we access the evaporator. And the evaporator just sits in there. But around that box there, there's a seal, um, a caulking that's put in there. And then you'll see there's a caulking or, or, excuse me, around the pipe as well. Uh, when you go to replace that, uh, especially on something this old, it's all hard and brittle. So it's got to be cleaned off. Um, and put some new stuff in it. On a newer vehicle, if it's only a couple years old, it may be soft enough to reuse it or not, but um, more than likely you may have to replace some of it. So what we use is this right here, this 3M strip caulk. We call it Dum Dum, because any Dum Dum can use it, I guess. And you can see it's just a soft, pliable strip of caulking. And uh, what you'll do is you'll take all along this seam here, when you take it apart, you can see where it's squeezed through a little bit. You'll clean all the old stuff out, get it all nice and clean, put new stuff in. After it's back together, you'll take a bunch of those ribbons and pack them together here, and you'll seal off the top, and you'll also seal off the lower one as well. And now, we're not sealing that off to, for any pressure or anything like that, what we want is inside this case here, we don't want dirt, debris, and junk and everything getting in there and clogging this all up so it isn't going to work correctly. We want it um, kept nice and clean, so that's why we have those seals put around in here so it doesn't suck in any um, dirt, and debris, and things like that. So that's your evaporator. Now, anytime you get a new part, your manufacturer will tell you a quantity of oil to put in it okay there's a certain amount of oil in the whole system and each part then kind of the oils distributed around the whole system and each part is going to have a certain amount of oil in it so before you put the evaporator on you're going to want to find out how much oil goes in it because it's a lot easier to get the oil in it when it's sitting on the bench and you can just pour it in there than to try to inject it in there they do have some tools to inject it in that i don't have any of those tools out here in my shop so i put the oil in first so for this particular gm what they recommend is the compressor is going to have six ounces of oil in it the evaporator is going to have one ounce of oil and then there's some other parts we're going to put on. We're going to put an ounce of oil in the accumulator. We're going to put an ounce, or we're going to put two ounces of oil in the condenser. And you'll see those parts as we uh, move along on this. Um, and then that gives us a total of 10 ounces in the system is what the system has. Okay? So that's how we do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a short break here. And no, I'll tell you what. Let's talk about it first before we, we move on to the next item here. So the evaporator, as I said, um, that's the first item that we're going to put in here. So let's kind of review a little bit of what this evaporator is going to do. So when you turn on your air conditioning, 
air is going to get drawn into this box here and it's going to pass through the evaporator. Now that's going to be the warm air that's in your vehicle. And it's going to pass through the evaporator and the refrigerant in there is going to be colder than that air. And remember we learned that warm will always transfer to something cooler. So that warm air that's in your passenger compartment as it goes through these little fins where the refrigerant is in, it's going to um, release the heat that's in that air into that. It's going to release it because of that refrigerant. And that refrigerant then that's inside there is going to absorb that heat. And as it absorbs that heat, it's also going to transfer or change states. It's going to turn from a liquid into a vapor, a gas, okay? And that's going to be removing the heat out of the air that's in your passenger compartment, okay? And then it's going to be sucked out of here. The compressor is going to be what's causing that hot gas, hot vapor to be sucked out of here. And it's going to come down here, and it's going to connect to in this case, an accumulator, because that's the type of system that we have. This is a cycling clutch system, so it has a accumulator on it, and it also has a fixed orifice tube, which we'll get to in a few minutes. So here's where the evaporator is going to be, or excuse me, the accumulator. So over here on the bench, here's my accumulator, and you can see that it's sealed up and that so that no moisture gets in there. Most manufacturers recommend that you will replace this anytime you open up the system because inside here is a desiccant. And if you remember from in class, what the desiccant does is it absorbs moisture. But if you open up the system and leave it open for 10, 15, 20 minutes or longer, that desiccant is just going to suck up all the moisture in the air and it's ruined. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh-oh, I got COVID-19. Huh? I'm coughing. <coughs> no, I don't have COVID-19. Um, so anytime you do that, they want you to replace that. So if you just open it up and real quick, sometimes you can get away with it. But in the case of this system, it had been open for a while. We're restoring the vehicle. We're going to put everything new on it. Because this is old, an old system, this um, accumulator here, is what we call kind of a universal accumulator. So it fits a lot of different GM applications. And the difference is the tube down here. So on the original accumulator, this tube would have been manufactured and welded right to it. But because they don't want to make, you know, 10 different accumulators for these old cars, because obviously they don't sell them like the new cars, they're not selling as many. What they've done is they make the one universal accumulator and then they have different tubes here that you buy based on your um, application. So what I did was I opened up the system here, put my oil in, put the tube back on real quick. And it's still sealed up. Now I just snug this up hand tight so that I can move this pipe to exactly where I want it because it's... I don't know what position it needs to be in at this point until it gets on the vehicle and that. If it would have been the uh, original one where it was welded, it would only go on in one place. The other thing I want you to notice is this is where we're going to fill the low side. And you'll see right there, there's a, there's a gasket that needs to be there. And this is a R12 style fitting. Now, one of the problems that we had with R12 was that R12 uses the same low side and high side fitting. So, back in the day when people would try to fill these systems themselves, they'd go to the auto parts store and they'd buy the little one can, uh, the one pound can of R12 refrigerant and try refilling them. And those got the nickname of suicide cans because what would happen is people would, instead of putting the can on the low side where the compressor is sucking the refrigerant to it they would hook it to the high side where the compressor is pressurizing it and then it over pressurizes a little can and it goes boom and people get hurt and killed so 
when they went to R134A, they went ahead and changed the fitting so that you can't mix them up from high and low side, but on the R12 systems you can. Now, if we wanted to switch this over and convert it to an R134, the kit would come with a fitting, a low side fitting that you would put on here and um, it would get um, loctited on there so it doesn't come off and then you'd be able to go with 134A. The other thing you also have to do here is you'll notice the, the rubber seal here. I'll show you I got a package of them here as well. All the different O-rings, they're green. Those are meant to be used with um, 134A. They can be used with R12, but you can't use R12, which are black rubber seals with 134A. If you remember, 134A is a smaller model, molecule and it can leak. So when you're retrofitting it, you have to change that all out. Most of the times now when you buy the parts, everything's all set up ready to go with 134A because they know most people aren't going to be putting R12 back in it. Um, in this case though, we are going to be putting in a material in here, which actually I'm not going to be doing here because I don't have the uh, system to charge it, but we're going to be putting a material in here called Hot Shot or Cool Car. And it is a substitute for R12. So it uses the same oil that's used in it. It uses the same um, hoses, everything. You don't have to change everything over. In our case, we were changing everything over anyway, so it didn't matter. But if you were trying to use an R12 system and you didn't want to, you didn't have to replace everything, it's a direct um, replacement for it. And it actually is an acceptable refrigerant um, by the EPA. It's on their list, on their SNAP program, which is the significant um, alternative new alternative program, SNAP, and it's listed there as it's an acceptable alternative, um, but it does have some restrictions. You can't put it in cars newer than 2017 and that, so on this car, it's a perfect way of doing that um, because we don't have to switch a lot of stuff around, but we were kind of putting new parts on anyways. Um, it is a little bit cheaper, so we're going with that, and uh, the guy one of my buddies who has the system to charge it, that's what he has. So we're going to go ahead and use it. Now, if we were to bring this into our shop, we would not be able to service it because our machines are set up for 134A and we could not um, evacuate this system into our machine because it would contaminate it. So we'd have to find somebody, I'd have to find someone who had that machine to uh, do the service. Like I said, I have a buddy of mine who's got a shop and he... Um, is going to take care of charging it for me whenever they lift our restriction to travel. Um, over here on the table, if we scoot over here a minute, I told you about the oil. So this is the oil that we use for R12 systems. It's mineral oil, and that's one of the reasons why we're going with this hot shot, because it also uses the same oil. And then I got a mixing cup here where I can uh, measure off how much oil goes into it, okay? So I've already done that. I've already put the oil in to the uh, accumulator, so it's all set. And now this is going to go on the side of the evaporator. And over here on this side, there's a cap on this. Um, it looks like another R12 fitting. This is not the high side. This cap here is for a... Uh, pressure cutoff valve that goes on there. And that's something that I haven't picked up yet. Um, I didn't think I needed it right now for this uh, demonstration. It's about 25 bucks and I didn't have the money at the time. So we said, uh, I'll get it. I'll get it a little bit later, but for right now we can get this system pretty much all put on and that and putting that cutoff switch on there is not a big deal. It just screws on to that fitting. All right. So let me go ahead and stop the the video here at this point um, and then I will go ahead and put this on and then get ready to explain the next couple of things that we're going to do with uh, with this system.